This hack tip is brought to you by Bitbucket by Atlassian. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. Before I get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you are watching this over on YouTube so you get to see all of our newest Hack Tip episodes. I am your host, Shannon Morris, and today we are talking about dealing with flash drives in the terminal. See, physical hard media is actually pretty easy to manage through the terminal, all the way down to installing ISOs and including formatting. I recently had to write an ISO, for example, to a flash drive in Linux for our main cabinet build that we were doing on Hack5 and Tech Thing, which are my two other shows. So it was really important to me that I did it right because it was for a segment. Now, going over to my computer, you can see what devices are mounted by just typing mount, and you're going to see a whole lot of stuff in here. You'll see devices listed as a device slash DEV on directory uh, called the mount point, plus the type of file system and any kind of options. Now, if I stick a flash drive in my computer, which I'll do now, and do the same command, where's the flash drive port? There it is. Is it upside down? There we go, okay. Ugh. Now that I have that flash drive plugged into my computer, I type mount again, and it's going to show up in my file directory on the GUI, sure, but it's also showing up under that mount command at the very end. So in my case, it shows up as slash dev slash SDA1. To unmount that device, because oftentimes with flash drives, if you don't unmount it correctly, it might end up cor corrupted, you can type umount slash dev and in my case, slash SDA1, or whatever the flash drive name is that appears on your computer. Now be really, really careful with names. You can screw up your computer if you unmount the wrong three thing, or if you end up formatting the wrong flash drive or formatting your hard drive instead. Now, next thing we wanna do is change the mounting point to by typing mount tac t, whatever the file system is for your flash drive, uh, and then slash dev slash sd1, and then put it in whatever that new directory is. Now breaking this down, this basically correlates to mount from mounting some type of storage media, in my case it's a flash drive, TAC-T is the file system type, so maybe it's in a, a FAT or maybe it's EXT3 or whatever it might be for the type of file system that you're mounting, so flash drive, uh, and then slash dev slash SDA1, which is the name of the flash drive according to my operating system, and lastly, the new directory for wherever I want it to mount. The thing about Linux is the mount point can end up being anywhere in this file system tree. So if you have pictures on your flash drive and you want to mount it in the pictures folder, you can do so. You can change the directory as well with cd slash dev slash sd1 and then go into that directory. Uh, once you type ls, you'll actually be able to see all those photos. Now if you try to unmount your flash drive while you're chilling inside of it, while it's mounted in some kind of uh, directory, it's going to give you an error just like it does on my computer. So what you want to do is CD back over to your home directory and then you can unmount it. Now I'm gonna do a little bit more about formatting right after the break. Let's be honest, your code is your world. You create it, you tweak it, you break it, and hopefully you fix it too, and you lovingly obsess over it every single day. So picking the right repository management tool is super important. Only the best for your code, right? That's why the team at Atlassian created Bitbucket. Bitbucket is the Git solution for professional teams helping over 5 million developers build with a purpose. Bitbucket gives teams of all sizes free private repositories with state-of-the-art features like the world's best pull request algorithm, built-in continuous delivery, and integrations with your favorite tools like Docker, AWS, and Azure. Plus you get Jira integration since it is from Atlassian, giving your team everything you need to take your code from concept all the way to customer. We have used Bitbucket to share private code and collab on it so that the code is absolutely perfect before we release it publicly. Bitbucket is for the code that takes us to Mars. It's for the code that drives your next car, or maybe it's for the code for your next InfoSec tool. You can visit bitbucket.org slash for the code to start your free account. That's bitbucket.org slash for the code. Try Bitbucket today. What will your code do? 
we are back and now it's time to reformat some flash drives. So let's reformat our drive. Make sure that it is an empty drive and you write down the name so that you don't end up reformatting your hard drive accidentally. So in my case, again, it's SDA1. First off, I wanna unmount the flash drive again and I wanna use sudo fdisk slash dev slash SDA1 to use fdisk. Now, in here, you're going to see a little command that says type M. So type N to see the whole menu, and this is basically the help menu. It'll show you all the different commands that you can do. But next, we are going to type P to view the partitions. So this is gonna give me information about the kind of disk that I am wanting to reformat. If I want to, I can type Q to exit, or I can check M for the menu again to see what else I can do to the drive, or to write any edits with W, and then I can quit. I've actually used the same F disk technique for a hard drive that was not working on Windows for some reason because it couldn't read a four terabyte hard drive. So I fixed it in Linux and then I installed it on my gaming machine at home. And I finally was able to read all four terabytes. So FDisk totally works, I love it. Back on my computer, if you wanna make a new file system on your flash drive, you can use sudo makefs, that's mkfs, slash t, and whatever your file system type is, slash dev and slash sda1. Next to discuss is file system check or FSCK for short. It's kind of weird looking. It almost looks like a curse word, to be honest. This can repair file systems if there is some kind of problem with it. So my flash drive, for example, has a problem. Luckily, it's a very easy problem to fix. So I'm going to type in sudo FSCK slash dev slash sda1 to check its integrity and it sees a problem, so I just check one and hit enter. And I'm going to run it again, so I'll type in the FSCK, SDA1, and this time it shows me that there are no issues to be found. Yay, so I fixed it. Now lastly, to copy files from one drive all the way over to another, you can use the DD command, which stands for data definition. I actually remember it by saying duplicate data. I know that's not what it means, but duplicate data makes a lot more sense to me. So I can type in DD if IF equals, and then whatever the file is that I wanna copy. So I'm gonna copy this patreon.py of equals slash dev slash sda1. So if is the input of the original file and of is the output or where you wanna send the file. You can also use this to burn ISO images to a drive or for example, you can use dd if equals and then laka.iso of equals slash dev slash sda1. So that would be to burn the laka iso over to my flash drive. Alternatively, you can also reverse the two file names if you wanna copy the bootable info off of a flash drive onto your hard drive and then make an iso out of them later. To wrap this up, you should always check the MD5 checksum of any kind of ISO that you download online. So this is going to verify that the ISO is authentic and it wasn't changed by some man in the middle interception. Now a website is probably going to show you MD5 checksum and then a bunch of numbers and letters that don't really make any sense. This is going to show you that there's an algorithmically generated specific key that only belongs to that file. MD5 is very old school. I know it can be hacked, but for the most part, this will help you out in knowing whether or not a file is good. You can run a check by typing MD5 sum, MD5, and then actual SUM, sum, and then whatever the file is, dot ISO. When you hit enter, it will show you MD5 checksum and whatever the letters and numbers are. In my case, I'm not using an ISO for this example, but it's very, very simple. Thank you so much to Bitbucket. We have got a bunch of hack tips heading your way, so be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash hack5. Until then, I wanna hear your feedback. You can comment below and be sure to check out our sister show, Hack5, for more great stuff just like this. I will be there, as usual, reminding you to trust your technolust.